right, so we are going to start reading Harry Potter book one. What has happened so far is Harry Potter has gone, he got his letter from Hagrid, and now he's on the train. He just got onto the train heading to Hogwarts. All right, let me start reading. Harry watched the girl and her mother disappear as the train rounded the corner. Houses flashed past the window. Harry felt a great leap of excitement. He didn't know what he was going to, but it had to be better than what he was leaving behind. The door of the compartment slid open and the youngest redhead boy came in. Anyone sitting there? He asked, pointing to a seat opposite Harry. Everywhere else is full. Harry shook his head and the boy sat down. He glanced at Harry and then looked quickly out of the window, pretending he hadn't looked. Harry saw he still had a black mark on his nose. Hi, hey, Ron, the twins were back. Listen, we're going down to the middle of the train. Lee Jordan's got a giant tarantula down there. Right, mumbled Ron. Harry, said the other twin, did we introduce ourselves? Fred and George Weasley. And this is our brother, Ron. See you later then. Bye, said Harry and Ron. The twins slid the compartment door shut behind them. Are you really Harry Potter? Ron blurted out. Harry nodded. Well, uh, I thought it might have been one of Fred and George's jokes. And... Have you really got, y you know, he pointed to Harry's forehead. Harry pulled back his bangs to show the lightning scar. Ron stared. So that's where you know who. Yes, said Harry, but I don't remember it. Nothing, said Ron eagerly. Well, I remember a lot of green light, but nothing else said Ron, and he sat and stared at Harry for a few minutes. Then, as though he suddenly realized what he was doing, he looked quickly out of the window again. Are all of your family wizards, asked Harry, who found Ron just as interesting as Ron found him. Mm, yeah, I think so, said Ron. I think mom's got a second cousin who's an accountant, but we never really talk about him. So you must know loads of magic already. The Weasleys were clearly part of one of those old wizarding families the pale boy in Diagon Alley had been talking about. I heard you went to go live with muggles, said Ron. What are they like? Horrible. Well, not all of them. My aunt and uncle and cousin are, though. Wish I had three wizard brothers. Five, said Ron. For some reason, he was looking gloomy. I'm the sixth in our family to go to Hogwarts. You could say I've got a lot to live up to. Bill and Charlie, they've left already. Bill was head boy, Charlie the captain of Quidditch. Now Percy's a prefect. Fred and George mess around a lot, but they still get really good marks and everyone thinks they're really funny. Everyone expects me to do as well as the others, but if I do, it's no big deal because they did it first. You never get anything new either with five older brothers. I've got Bill's old robes, Charlie's old wand, and Percy's old rat. Ron reached inside his jacket and grabbed out a fat gray rat, which was asleep. His name's Scabbers, and he's useless. He hardly ever wakes up. Percy got an owl from dad for being made a prefect, but they couldn't have, f I mean, I got scabbers instead. Ron's ears went pink. He seemed to think he had said too much because he went back to staring out of the window. Harry didn't think there was anything wrong about not being able to afford an owl. After all, he had never had any money in his life until a month ago. And he told Ron so 
all about having to wear Dudley's old clothes, never getting any proper birthday presents, and this seemed to cheer Ron up. And, and, and until Hagrid told me, I didn't know anything about being a wizard or my parents or Voldemort. Ron gasped. You s what, said Harry. You said you know whose name, said Ron, sounding both shocked and impressed. I thought you of all people. I'm not trying to be brave or anything, saying the name, said Harry. I just never knew that you shouldn't. See what I mean? I've got lots to learn. I bet, he added in a voice, voicing something for the first time. He had been worrying a lot about. I bet I'm the worst in the class. You won't be. There's loads of people who come from Muggle families, and they learn quick. Enough. While they had been talking, the train carried them out of London. Now they were speeding past fields full of cows and sheep. They were quiet for some time, watching the fields and lanes click, flick by. Around half past 12, there was a great clattering outside in the corridor and a smile, smiling dimpled woman slid back their door and said, anything off the carts, dear? Harry, who hadn't had anything for breakfast, leapt to his feet, but Ron's ears turned pink again and muttered he had brought a sandwich. Harry went into the corridor. He had never had money for sweets before. And now that his pockets were rattling with gold and silver, he was ready to buy as much candy as possible. But the woman didn't have the candy he was used to. What she did have were Birdie Bot's Every Flavored Beans, Drupal's Best Blowing Gum, Chocolate Frogs, Pumpkin Pasties, Cauldron Cakes, Licorice Wands, and a number of other strange things Harry had never seen before in his life. Not wanting to miss anything, he got some of everything and paid the woman 11 sickles and seven bronze nuts. Ron stared as Harry brought it all back into the compartment and tipped it onto an empty seat. Hungry, are you? Starving, said Harry, taking a large bite of pumpkin pastries. Ron had taken out a lumpy sandwich and unwrapped it. There were four sandwiches inside. He pulled one of them apart and said, she always forgets I don't like corned beef. Swap you for one of these, said Harry, holding up a pastry. Go on. Oh, you don't want this. It's all dry, said Ron. She hasn't got much time, he added quickly. You know, with five of us. Go on, have a pastry, said Harry, who had never had anything to share before or indeed anyone to share it with. It was a nice feeling, sitting there with Ron, eating their way through all of Harry's pastries, cakes, sandwiches, er, and candies. The sandwiches lay forgotten. What are these? Harry asked Ron, holding up a pack of chocolate frogs. They're not really frogs, are they? He was starting to feel that nothing would surprise him. No, said Ron, but see what the card is. I'm missing Agrippa. Huh? Oh, of course, you wouldn't know. Chocolate frogs have cards inside them, you know, to collect. Famous witches and wizards. I've got about 500, but I haven't got Agrippa or Patalumi. Harry unwrapped his chocolate frog and picked up the card. It showed a man's face. He wore half-moon glasses, had a long, crooked nose, and flowing silver hair, beard, and a mustache. Underneath the picture was the name Albus Dumbledore. So this is Dumbledore, said Harry. Don't tell me you've never heard of Dumbledore, said Ron. Can I have a frog? I might get Agrippa. Thanks. Harry turned over the card and read. Albus Dumbledore, currently headmaster of Hogwarts. Considered by many of the greatest wizards of modern time, 
Dumbledore is particularly famous for his defeat of the dark wizard Grindelwald in 1945, for the discovery of 12 uses of dragon blood, and his work on alchemy with his partner Nicholas Flamel. Professor Dumbledore enjoys chamber music and 10-point bowling. Harry turned over the card and to his astonishment saw that Dumbledore's face had disappeared. He's gone! Well, you can't expect him to hang around all day, said Ron. He'll be back. Oh, I've got Morgana again. I've got about six of her. Do you want? You can start collecting. Ron's eyes strayed to the pile of chocolate frogs waiting to be unwrapped. Help yourself, said Ron. But you know, in the muggle world, people just stay put in their photos. What? They don't move at all, said Ron. Weird. Harry stared at Dumbledore as he sidled back into the picture on his card and gave him a small smile. Ron was more interested in eating the frogs than looking at famous witches and wizards. But Harry couldn't keep his eyes off of them. Soon, he had not only Dumbledore but and Morgana, but Hedgwit of Woodcroft, Alberic, Grunin, Sirs, Parlosimus, and Merlin. He finally tore his eyes away from the druid, Sintola, who was scratching her nose to open a bag of Bertie Bot's Every Flavor Beans. You want to be careful with those, Ron warned Harry. When they say every flavor, they mean every flavor. You know, you get all the ordinary ones, like chocolate and peppermint and marmalade, but then you get can get the spinach and liver and tripe. George reckons he once had a booger flavor one. Ron picked up a green bean and looked at it carefully and bit into a corner. Ugh. See, sprouts. They had a good time eating the every flavor beans. Harry got toast, coconut, baked beans, strawberries, curry, grass, coffee, and sardine, and was even brave enough to nibble the end off a funny gray one Ron wouldn't touch, which turned out to be pepper. The countryside, now flying past the window, became wilder and wilder. The neat fields were gone. Now there were woods, twisting rivers, and dark green hills. There was a knock on the door of their compartment, and the round-faced boy Harry had passed on the platform nine and three quarters came in. He looked tearful. Sorry, he said, but have you seen a toad at all? When they shook to their heads, he wailed, I've lost him. He keeps getting away from me. He'll turn up, said Harry. Yes, said the boy miserably. Well, if you see him. He left. Don't know why he's so bothered, said Ron. If I'd brought a toad, I'd lose it as quickly as I could. Mind you, I've got scabbers, so I can't really talk. The rat was still snoozing on Ron's lap. He might have died and it wouldn't have made a difference, he said, said Ron in disgust. I tried to turn him yellow yesterday to make him more interesting, but the spell didn't work. I'll show you. Look. He rummaged around in his trunk and pulled out a very battered old looking wand. It was chipped in some places and something white was glinting out of the end. Unicorn hair is nearly poking out. Anyway. He had just raised his wand when the compartment door slid open again. The toadless boy was back, but this time he had a girl with him. She was already wearing her new Hogwarts robes. Has anyone seen a toad? Neville's lost one, she said. She had a rather bossy sort of voice, lots of bushy brown hair, and rather large front teeth. We already told him we haven't seen it, said Ron, but the girl wasn't listening. She looked at the wand in his hand. Oh, are you doing magic? Let's see. She sat down. Ron looked taken aback. Uh, okay, he cleared his throat. Sunshine, daisy, butter, melon. Turn this stupid fat rat yellow. He waved his wand, but nothing happened. Scabbard stayed gray and fast asleep. Are you sure that's a real spell? said the girl. Well, it's not very good now, is it? 
I've tried a few simple spells just for practice, and it's worked for me. Nobody in my fam family's magic at all. It was ever such a surprise when I got the letter. But I was ever so pleased, of course. I mean, it's the very best school of witchcraft, isn't it? I've heard, I've heard, I've learned all of our books by heart, of course. I just hope it will be enough. I'm Hermione Granger, by the way. And you are? She said all of this rather fast. Harry looked at Ron and was relieved to see by his stunned face that he hadn't learned the books by heart either. I'm Ron Weasley, Ron muttered. Harry Potter, said Harry. Are you really, said Hermione. I know all about you, of course. I got a few extra books for background reading. And you're in modern magical history and the rise and fall of the dark arts and great wizarding events of the 20th century. Am I? said Harry, feeling dazed. Goodness, didn't you know? I would have found out everything I could if it had been me. Do you, either of you know which house you're going to be in? I hope I'm in Gryffindor. It sounds the best by far. I heard Dumbledore himself was in it, but I suppose Ravenclaw couldn't be that bad. Anyway, we better go and look for Neville's toad. You two have better change, you know. I expect we'll be there soon. She left, taking the toadless boy with her. Whatever house I'm in, I hope she's not in it, said Ron. He threw his wand back on his trunk. Stupid spell. George gave it to me. I bet he knew it was a dud. What house are your brothers in? asked Harry. Gryffindor, said Ron. Gloom seemed to be saddling on him again. Mom and Dad were in it too. I don't know what they'll say if I'm not. I suppose Ravenclaw wouldn't be that bad. But imagine if they put me in Slytherin. That's the house vault, I, I mean, you know who was in, right? Yeah, said Ron. He flopped back into his seat, looking depressed. You know, I think the end of Scaver's whiskers are a bit lighter, said Harry, trying to take Ron's mind off houses. So what do you do? What do your older brothers do now that they've left anyway? Harry was wondering what a wizard did once he finished school. Charlie's in Romania studying dragons, and Bill's in Africa doing something for Gringotts. Said Ron, did you hear about Gringotts? It's all over the Daily Prophet. But I suppose you don't get that living with the muggles. Someone tried to rob a high security vault. Harry stared. Really? What happened then? Nothing. That's why it's such big news. They didn't get caught. My dad said it must have been powerful dark magic to get around Gringotts, but they don't think they took anything. That's what's odd. Of course, everyone gets scared when something like this happens, in case you know who's behind it. Harry turned this news over in his mind. He was starting to get a prickle of fear every time you know who was mentioned, and he supposed this was all part of entering the magical world. But he had been a lot more comfortable saying Voldemort without worrying. What's your Quidditch team, said Ron. Uh, I don't know any, Harry confessed. What, said Ron, looking dumbfounded. Oh, wait, it's the best game in the world. And he was off, explaining all about the four balls and positions of seven players describing famous games he had been to with his brothers and the broomstick he would like to get if he ever had the money. He was just taking Harry through the finer points of the game when the compartment door slid open yet again, but it wasn't Neville, the toadless boy, or Hermione Granger this time. Three boys entered, and Harry recognized the middle one at once. It was a pale boy from Madame Mulkin's rope shop. He was looking at Harry with a lot more interest than he had shown back in Diagon Alley. Is it true, he said, they're saying all down the train that Harry Potter is in this compartment. So it is you, isn't it? Yes, said Harry. He looked at the other boys. Both of them were thick set and looked extremely mean. Standing on either side of the pale boy, 
They looked like bo bodyguards. Oh, this is Crab and Goyle, said the pale boy carelessly, noticing at what Harry was looking at. And my name's Malfoy, Draco Malfoy. Ron gave a slight cough, which might have been hit hiding a snigger. Draco Malfoy looked at him. Think my name's funny, do you? No need to ask who you are. My father told me all the Weasleys had red hair and freckles and more children than they could afford. He turned back to Harry. You'll soon find some wizarding families are better than others. You don't want to go making fr friends with the wrong sort. I can help you there. He held out his hand to shake Harry's, but Harry didn't take it. I think I can tell who the wrong sort are for myself, thanks, he said coolly. Draco Malfoy didn't go red, but a pink tinge appeared in his pale cheeks. I'd be careful if I was you, Potter, he said slowly. Unless you're a bit politer, you're going to end up the same way as your parents. They didn't know what was good for them either. You hang around with riffraff like the Weasleys and Hagrid and it'll rub off on you. Both Harry and Ron stood up. Say that again, Ron said, his face as red as his shirt. Oh, you're going to fight us, said Malfoy. Unless you get out now, said Harry, more bravely than he felt, because Crab and Goyle were a lot bigger than him and Ron. But we don't feel like leaving, do we, boys? We've eaten all our food, and you seem to have some. Goyle reached towards the chocolate frogs next to Ron. Ron leapt forward. But before he had so much as touched Goyle, Goyle let out a horrible yell. Scabbers the rat was hanging off his finger. Sharp little teeth sunk deep into Goyle's hand. Crab and Malfoy backed away as Goyle swung Scabbers round and round, howling. And when Scabbers finally flew off and hit the window, all three of them disappeared at once. Perhaps they thought there was more rats lurking among the suites, or perhaps they had heard footsteps because seconds later, Hermione Granger entered. What has been going on? She said, looking at the sweets all over the floor and Ron picking up Scabbers by the tail. I think he's been knocked out, Ron said to Harry. He looked closer at Scabbers. No, I don't believe it. He's gone back to sleep. And so he had. You've met the Malfoys before? Harry explained about their meeting in Diagon Alley. I've heard of his family, said Ron darkly. They were some of the first to come back to our side after you-know-who disappeared, said they had been bewitched. My dad doesn't believe it. He says Malfoy's father didn't need an excuse to go over to the dark side. He turned to Hermione. Can we help you with something? You better hurry up and put your robes on. I've been up to the front to ask the conductor, and he said we're nearly there. You haven't been fighting, have you? You'll be in trouble before we even get there. Scabber's been fighting, not us, said Ron, scowling at her. Would you mind leaving so we can change? All right. I only came in here because people outside were behaving very childishly, running up and down the corridors, she said Hermione in her, a sniffly voice. And you've got dirt on your nose, by the way. Ron glared at her as she left. Harry peered out of the window. It was getting dark. He could see mountains and forest under a deep purple sky. The train did seem to be slowing down. He and Ron took off their jeans and pulled on their long black robes. Ron's were a bit short for him, and you could see his sneakers underneath them. A voice echoed through the train. We will be reaching Hogwarts in five minutes. Please leave your luggage on the train. It will be taken to the school separately. Harry's stomach lurched with nerves, and Ron, he saw, looked pale under his freckles. They crammed their pockets with the last of the candy and joined the crowd thronging the corridor. The train slowed right down and finally stopped. People pushed their way towards the door and out on a tiny dark platform. Harry shivered in the cold night air. Then 
a lamp came bobbing over their heads of the students, and Harry heard a familiar voice. First years, first years, yeah, all right, Harry. Hagrid's big, hairy head beamed over the sea of heads. Come on, follow me. Any more first years? Mind your step. First years, follow me. Slipping and stumbling, they followed Hagrid down what seemed to be a steep, narrow path. It was so dark on either side of them that Harry thought there must be thick trees nearby. Nobody spoke much. Neville, the boy who kept losing his toad, sniffed once or twice. You'll get your first sight of Hogwarts in just a sec, Hagrid called over his shoulder just round the bend. There was a loud, ooh. The narrow path had opened suddenly onto the edge of a great black lake, perched atop a high mountain. On the other side, its many windows sparkling in the starry night, was a vast camp castle with many turrets and towers. No more than four in a boat, Hagrid called, pointing to a fleet of little boats sitting in the water by the shore. Harry and Ron were followed into their boats by Neville and Hermione. Everyone in, shouted Hagrid, who had a boat all to himself. Right then, forward! And the fleet of little boats moved off all at once, gliding across the lake, which was as smooth as glass. Everyone was silent staring up at the great castle overhead. It towered over them as they sailed nearer and nearer to the cliff on which it stood. Heads down, yelled Hagrid as the first boats reached the cliff. They all bent their heads and the tiny little boats carried them through a curtain of ivy that hid a wide opening in the cliff face. They were carried along a dark tunnel which seemed to be taking them right underneath the castle until they reached a kind of underground harbor where they clambered out onto rocks and pebbles. Oi, you there, is this your toad? Said Hagrid, who was checking the boats as people climbed out of them. Trevor, cried Neville blissfully, holding out his hands. Then they clambered up a passageway in the rock after Hagrid's lamp coming out at last onto smooth, damp grass right in the shadow of the castle. They walked up a flight of stone steps and crowded around the huge oak front doors. Everyone here? You there? Still got your toad? Hagrid raised a gigantic fist and knocked three times at the castle door. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And we will do another live stream tomorrow at 10.30.